love to see it laid out on big wheels with big power. Just, just Low, rolling smoke off the tires at sideways, you know. Not to mention shoving it in Thomas's face a little bit. I was like, we do 22s on it. I'd like to do a big LS. I'd like to have the time to put a nice paint job on it, too. I don't want to just throw something together, either. Two weeks on it would be nice if we could split the parts and be doing body work while they're doing fabrication. So this is the part Richard always, always, always tells us all the money we don't have to spend and all the things we can't do to the car. You know, the part where we have to start lowering our sights a little bit. You guys do play with it all the time, even on your own time. So in the, oh my god, this is what I want to build world, how much money do you want to spend? That was not what I was expecting to come out of his mouth. We'd spend 50 in hard parts. We, I mean, there's, there's no kidding between drivetrain and suspension and wheels. I mean, we're going to spend. And then the interior, granted, there's not much of it, but if we want to make it not look like an LMC catalog, then it's going to cost a little bit, even though it's small. OK, well, here's what I'm going to do. And I've never done this before, and I'm really scared because I know you guys will go overboard. Probably. I want this to be the yeah. nicest thing we've built. Spend the money, spend the time. Can we get that? But I need, it, I need it in a month. OK. So. All right. We'll get it in there and tear it apart. You just got the carte blanche from Ricardo. OK, everybody, I know when you see me give Aaron a blank check, you're thinking, wow, has Richard lost it completely? Well, don't get your panties in a bunch, because old Tricky Ricky, he's got a plan. And I think it's a good one, too. You see, every year, Dallas throws a giant party called the Cattle Baron's Ball. Now, this is a pretty cool shindig where all of Dallas' elite come in, knock back some champagnes, and start spending money on all kinds of cool auction items like cars and trucks. And that's where Gas Monkey comes in. I know a little thing or two about marketing. And a billboard, well, it doesn't always have to be on the side of the road. My plan is to let Aaron build the truck of his dreams, and then I'm going to auction it off at the Cattle Baron's Ball. If I can get those fat cats an eye full of Gas Monkey magic up on that stage, well, everybody starts bidding, and there's only one winner. Well, I'll tell you one thing about Texans. They don't like to lose. So all the other guys with big, deep pockets, they'll be lining up at Gas Monkey wanting something bigger and better. <laughs> Gotta say, this truck seems to be starting off on the right foot for a change. I mean, everyone's really excited about putting their hands on this build. How freaking awesome is this? Yeah, that's sexy. Cool, 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 cool. But the cool thing for us is, is it's a great canvas. The sad part, really, is how little of it we're going to use. But then again, who cares? Because when we're all done, it should be fast, loud, low. Oh, and one other thing. It will be terribly, terribly expensive. But you did hear Richard say, we have carte blanche. Do whatever we want. So I'm going to do it. So a recipe for cooking the C10 is starting to come to a boil. I have Mike and Kiki working on the remaining body work on the cab, while Jason is working on the rack and pinion in the front of the truck. Myself, I'm about to add some bling to the rear end. Dang! Yeah! Holy! Holy Are you sure you want to cover it up? Wow. That's right. That's my new rear axle. I just need a place to put it. Since we're putting the truck all the way on the ground, the original frame would have run into the axle. So we're going to put a step notch in it. Before, the axle lived underneath the frame. And now, because of our dramatically altered ride height and much larger wheels and tires, we're actually going to ride at where the frame rail used to be. We've slid the Porterbilt step notches over the top of the frame rail. Now everything's square. Everything is the right height. Now I'm actually going to remove the remaining section of frame, and then we'll have all the clearance we need. It'll look really clean when it's done. It's looking good. Carte blanche, 27 days, make it happen. So clearly, Aaron has no problem with this carte blanche of spending my money. And since I don't expect to make any money on this truck, at least not immediately, I got to find something to flip pretty quick, because I need some cashola coming in the door. That's a pretty big motor, dude. Oh, it's going to be rowdy. There it goes. I like it. I, I like it to death. Man, these things are so cool, they're giving me goosebumps. These things are 35 inches. I wish I was 35 inches. Oh! Looks good. Hey, tight, tired. Like, hey, I can feel the chill all the way over here. That tire size is perfect. I can't wait to finally see this thing on the floor. Looks good. Really good. Badass. Y'all ready? Yep. Get it. Pass it off. Okay, come down. Can you go any slower, Jason? I know. 
All right, Likey. She's starting to look like a girl you just might want to take home. Let's get a fender on. I want to check the clearance. So when it comes to the engine bay, we've got a nice motor, and we'd like to keep it that way, and we'd like to not have reverse dents in the hoods. So since the factory inner fenders are placed far too low in the vehicle to be of any use with 22s and air ride, we're simply going to have to remove them. So we're going to use slosh tubs. Yeah! Kunk, kunk, kunk. What we get from it is some serious impact, both visually and practically. Uh, dude, that's not gonna fit. I don't think it's even gonna go down. <laughs> Somebody air the truck up. So, we attempted to put the modified fender onto the truck while it was laid out. Didn't quite work because the tire was practically on the inner fender, so we're gonna lift the truck up and try and reinstall the fender. No, there's no bird tree. <laughs> Firewall. Huh, okay. Unfortunately, space is a limited commodity, especially when we're trying to cram so many large items in such a small space, much like the slosh tub and my firewall. They're both trying to live in the same spot. Problem is, I think the front end's maxed out. Uh, <sighs> this could have gone better. Yeah, I know. Anybody want to buy a set of slosh tubs? So I've got a couple of choices here. I can remove the slosh tubs completely, which I don't want to do, or I could put on a smaller tire, which I definitely don't want to do. That's a real bummer, man. Really hoping we'd have inner fenders. Then, there's a third choice. I can take the time to do it right, simply cut out what's hitting, modify the firewall, and then re-glass the back of the slosh tub, which is precisely what we're going to do. I really like to keep it going. I don't want to be shut down by a little piece of firewall. What if we cut up in here? That'll mm -hmm. get us back a little bit. I was told I could build the truck the way I wanted to, and that's what I'm here to do. Let's go, let's go back to bed. Let's go back to doing what we know how to do. All right, let's make tire clamps. Let's make this work. These modifications will push our schedule back a few days, and hopefully we can make it up further on down the line. But the truth of the matter is, this is a build that none of us want to compromise on. I got fender problems, but at least it looks cool. <laughs> OK, well, this has been exciting. Let's get back to work. Yesterday, we started addressing some of the fitment issues that we discovered on the front end of the C10. Today, we're going to start on the rear. Yep, doesn't fit for nothing. It's no surprise our big tires are just as problematic back to there. So you're thinking to yourself, the circus is in town, like a German circus. Well, not really. But it's still a good day because the shorty Volkswagen van just got here to gas. And my idea is this. The guys have been through a bunch of big builds lately, and it's time for a little fun, funky little project. But there won't be any fun in Funky Town if Aaron can't get his Farfuck Nugan up to it. Shorty short, Buzz. That's a bad-shaped soda can. Yeah. It looks like a uh, looks like a handful of drive. Looks like uh, you get a little bit of rodeo action if you find a speed bump. I think this thing would be hilarious with a big monster Volkswagen motor. I think it'd be hilarious with a motor that ran. Take one look at this foreign-made monstrosity. And you know I'm going to love it. I absolutely love it. I really do. Yeah, I, I, I dig it. I dig it a lot. I think, I think it'll work. Well, I'm down. Sure I'm enough, doing. Aaron actually likes the short bus. Are those red Hanes? That's pretty sweet, man. And as long as Aaron's jazzed on a project, that makes my life easy. So I'm, I'm down. Hey, well, do we get a special do we get a special prize for someone to be able to drive this thing on the freeway? Dude, somebody will be able to drive it. What are you talking about? Unless the semi goes past you too I will, fast. I will, I, will hold you, I will hold you to that. <laughs> All right, well, then it's settled. We're going to build it. Sure. Right in. <laughs> oh, shit. Hit the brakes. Hit the brakes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Aaron were talking a little bit, and, and I think the smartest thing to do is uh, build the entire underneath. Front suspension, rear suspension, brakes all around, new motor, new training. Just go new everything, front to back. Which isn't very far. This is a, this is a short one. <laughs> but other than that, I don't want to spend more than about 7,500 bucks on it. What's it worth? Done, eight? I think it's worth 12, 12, five-ish done. So I think I have a better chance of selling it if it's just down low with good looking wheels and tires and it's reliable. If it's just a little fun toy, I mean, is it really worth no. days worth of labor fixing the roof? If you want to roll it on the side so you can look at it <laughs> Tilt it over? You probably could. If it's a massive undertaking, it's going to take us three or four extra days. I don't think the juice is worth the squeeze. Squeeze, get it? Squeeze together. 
Got it. Got it. So the plan's real simple, and we need to have some fun on this one. So we'll get it riding low with new suspension. We'll chunk a motor in there because it doesn't have one. Shiny wheels. Get Casey to smooth out the top, paint it green and white, and make it pop. Boom. Then it's off to Sue to get the interior finished up, and the monkeys will be short on fun with 7,500 bucks and 10 days to get it done. Am I gonna make money on the short bus? Probably not, but it's kind of fun. It's kind of kitschy cool, and if we can have a little fun, raise a little morale in the back, great, you know? And then if we can break out of it, fine. If we can't, then it'll just be another one of those losers. Richard left us to carry down this little VW bus. Instead of have fun with this. So the way I look at it, for once, I'm just gonna follow orders. What are we doing? Start tearing it apart. You just got here and you already broke something? I like the vans, but I hate this van. Yeah, this van's a piece of <laughs> This van is sad. I'm so sad because I'm small. I got this problem. All right, let's put it on the lift. How do y'all plan on putting it on the lift? This is going to be a task. Now what? I think that's going to happen. Nope. I think it's too rotted. Not going to get inside for no. it. We'll take tires off, put their arms in, and just do it that way. I mean, we got no other choice. They roll back on his Go ahead. Go ahead. Keep on. Against this rotor. On the next episode of Fast and Loud, will they learn how to jack up the bus? Aaron, you got any ideas on how we can get this thing elevated? The biggest problem is there's some damaged frame rails in the back, so we don't we don't trust their strength. And then the other thing is jack stands have to really be in front of the back wheels, and they really need to be behind the front wheels. And then it's like the world's worst teeter totter. And so, job one, pick the stupid car up. Too bad we don't have leg extensions for the forklift. We do. We do. Right over there. <laughs> we sure as hell do. This is, but it's a hundred percent real. I'm talking about weld the skid onto the bottom, the center of the so you bottom want, of this you thing. Want you slide the forks underneath and pick up. Won't we do a test right now? Yeah. We have like the coolest bad idea, which is where we just weld sticks to the bottom of it and pick the whole truck up with the forklift, which gives us like this all terrain, anywhere auto lift. It might not be a good idea, but it's cool. Yeah, this makes perfect sense. Weld it. <laughs> being the ringleader of a circus is like being king of the monkeys. Do I look too much like Liberace? Or more like Vincente Fernandez? Anyway, animals don't always behave like they should. Casey's always late to work. I can never find Aaron. You know, you've got your back flips, and you got to make sure you stick all this stuff. Christy never knows who the boss is. Go, scooch. And you have to deal with a lot of egos. I can do anything. Even who <laughs> nanny gives me trouble once in a while. That's my favorite monkey. <laughs> At the end of the day, there's still no business like show business. I'm a star. I'm a star, a bright, shining star. <sighs> Come on, shorty, it's showtime. How's it doing? Kids, don't talk with your mouthful. OK, I give up. No matter what, the show must go on. <laughs>《Get close to your television sets, ladies and gentlemen, because you're gonna see the weirdest, the craziest, the shortest Volkswagen van!' This thing wouldn't even fit on our lift. We couldn't put it on jack stands. It barely even fits on the floor jack. So, I welded some sticks to the bottom of it and picked it up with the forklift. We don't build Volkswagen vans every day at a Gas Monkey Garage, but we can build anything. Hey, that's my shirt. These camels are crazy.
And because we know nothing about German parts, we relied on air-cooled for the wheels, the transmission, and the brakes. And they're not only cute, they're awesome. <sighs> Wagon's west front suspension, bug rear suspension, and a nasty little two-liter motor. This thing ought to get it. Will you quit eating my shirt? Since the cut up on it was so rough, we had to jump right into body work. We started smearing the plastic. We finally got some shape to this thing. I told Casey what I wanted for paint. Vibrant colors, something wacky, something 60s, weirdness. And he painted it baby blue and white. When I put out the word I was looking for a pink 55, of course, well, Thomas heard about it. I knew I saw one in the backwoods someplace. Well, Thomas must have had better memory than I do because he snatched it right out from under my nose. They're not ex super expensive cars. I just hate spending money with the tired up garage. I hope the car's a total piece of so we don't have to buy it. So Thomas said he'd be at the shop, and he'd show me the car, and uh, me and Aaron brought the trailer because it's probably not going to run. Well, that's pink guy like four-door. And it is an amazing hue of I mean pink, sorry. It's ugly. I want to go. Thomas Weeks, I'm here to buy this pink Cadillac, maybe. It's ugly. Let's go. If he already knows that I need the car, it's going to cost me more than it should. Thomas isn't here. What do you mean Thomas isn't here? So Richard and Aaron, they show up to buy this Cadillac. They think they're going to deal with Thomas, but they got to deal with me and Tom today. Thomas only paid 15000 for this caddy. He wants us to get twenty for it. He said he was going to be here. He wanted to show me this car because I told him I need one. He is indisposed. What do y'all know about it? It's pink. It turns out Thomas isn't here. And uh, I got to deal with my two favorite guys, Tom and Jordan. And they're not really my favorite guys, but you know they're over here trying to be entrepreneurs, and that's just fine. Have you touched it yet? Yeah. What'd you do to it? I looked at it. That's it? Yep. Well, your team over would be happy you actually bring a car back that runs and doesn't have any rust. God, it's a mess under here, man. It's all about supply and demand. And uh, Richard's been looking all over town for this little pink. I think it's a Cadillac. Boy, he's thinking hard. It's because it's ugly. I need the car. It's not that bad. We're going to do our thing to it anyways. Now I just got to get it bought. He did tell me what he was wanting for it. How, how many dollars is that? 35 grand. It's not worth 35 grand. It's got the Dagmars. Richard, it's got the Dagmars. There you go. Deal's done right, right there. For somebody like Tom to point out Dagmars, I mean, I think he has a set of Dagmars himself. I only think the car's worth about 20 grand. I know Thomas. He's going to inflate the price knowing I was coming over here. How about, uh, how about just screw it? I need the car, so how about 25 grand? We, we can do 25. All right, cool. 25 grand, brother. Excellent. Thomas said he'd take 20 grand. Richard said 25. Let's get this thing on the trailer and get it back to gas money. We sold that Cadillac to him for $5,000 over. Me and Tom, we get to split that. That's our severance package. They said they said they'll drive. Well, I ain't driving it. You go for it. Tell Thomas I'll send him the cash. See y'all right. later. Man, you look good in that. I look good in everything. No, you don't need awesome. a Falcon race car. You need a pink four-door Cadillac. Thank God you got this thing sold already. Here's the plan. This should be a quick build. Just give me, give me a list of everything that you actually want done on it. Pull the motor and tranny. Go ahead and build them clean up everything, give it a little bit of gas monkey attitude, and run. I already paid 25 grand for the car, so I'm only giving the monkeys another 25 grand to build it out. I got too much money to make up to pay for my NHRA partnership. All we got to do is give it a little TLC. We'll rebuild the motor, the tranny, slam it on air ride suspension. We're keeping the pink, of course, but we're adding a little gas monkey flare with some metal flake. If the guys get it all done in less than two weeks, well, my favorite color is turning from green to pink. Boom! Well, the problem is we got some other stuff going. Driving it over here, it did get here, but this transmission I know is gone, and the motor's not real happy. But we'll see how we'll see how deep it goes. So. Is it as bad as the Rambler? Well, there. See, I win one. Y'all get after it. I'm not sure that's a win. As a matter yeah. of fact, I don't think it is at all. Let's start tearing this thing apart. Raise it up! This will never make any noise. Here we go. 
getting new wheels and tires? And... Uh, I believe so. All right, all right, all right. So Richard wants this build done fast and perhaps a little cheap. So on this one, we're not going to tear it down to the very last pull. Uh -huh. In fact, quite the opposite. Yeah. Let me tell you a little fact about Cadillacs. Parts are not easy to come by. So we've got to work with what we've got. And after getting underneath this thing, it really concerns me to work with Richard's timeline. If he wants all detailed in the bottom, but like paint won't stick to this. No, I think this is 98% oil. <laughs> yeah. OK, let's get the motor out of this thing. Yeah, the issue with the Cadillac is simple. You cannot get parts. So pretty much all the major systems have to be taken out of this car and rebuilt. Are you check? Whoa. Hold on, something's breaking. Well, yeah, we're dragging on the tranny. The tranny's hitting the firewall. It looks like about six miles long. I feel like I got to pack a hot dog on the back of my neck. Those are ballpark style hot dogs on the back of my neck right now. <laughs> uh, that pulley needs to come off, though, or you're going to take out that course board. I hate this car. Let's just say that caught on fire and roll it outside. Let's leave it Here's there till we're done. <laughs> hey, drop, drop the jacket. That's what's holding it up. Oh, OK. Watch yourself, because it may recoil like that. <laughs> so I was afraid of the shadiest Dude, motor this, pool of all time. Is this is heavy. Is. Hey, Chris, I need you, please. Jonathan, please. You got it? Yeah, it was a pry bar. All right, you can bring it down. So Dustin and I took the motor out finally, literally standing up straight up and down almost. Now what we're going to do is we're going to separate the transmission motor, mm. take the motor over to Jamie, the transmission over to our transmission oh. guy. We'll also be sending out all the power steering, the brakes, and the water pump. Uh, a lot of the various systems of the car have to be sent out to be rebuilt. Which, of course, now we have to wait for all the major parts of the car to come back so we can finish the build. So, in the meantime, we're going to finish detailing the underside of the car. Thank you, Richard. Dustin, when you're finished up there, can you give me a hand with this? So we're five days into our big build. And to be frank, I thought we'd be further along. But Richard's little pink princess has turned out to be a royal pain in the and everything is taking longer than it should on this so-called quick build that Richard needs to finish so he can pay for his race car. Then you punch yourself. All right, you want to babysit? Yep. All right. We're still waiting for the motor and train to come back from being rebuilt. We're also waiting on some rare parts. And while Dustin has made some headway by getting the front airbags installed, it's time to take on a whole new challenging, complicated task of installing the rear air ride system on the back of this car. Let me know if you see any problems or anything. Okay. Here, stop for a second. Typically, whenever we slam a car as low as I want this one, it means going through the floor for the drive shaft and some of the suspension components. But since we only have nine days, we really don't have the time to do the sheet metal work. So we're going to have to mock up the rear end and see if I can keep everything underneath the floor. Today is the 34 Ford 5 with the coupe. OK. A lot of times, uh, you know, when I'm doing my interweb checking, I'm also checking my email. And people know I buy a lot of cars. And uh, this one actually came to me, supposedly all steel. He said he didn't know about the fenders for sure. It doesn't matter. I don't care about fenders. Yeah, exactly. This guy emailed me a few pictures of his 34 Ford 5 window, and uh, I liked it. So me and Aaron jumped a plane. We're down here driving around somewhere outside of Atlanta, Georgia. This is it. The thing on the dash says turn. I guess if it snows, you ain't going to work that day. He's got you a really good running start. Good morning. How we doing, guys? Good, how are you? I'm Jim Harrington, and this is Melinda Harrington. We're in Cumming, Georgia. We got yeah. the guy and the decision maker. <laughs> That's, That's right. it. We're here together right. at the same time. Cool. Awesome. Well, let's take a look at this 34. I'll take what's behind garage door number two. <laughs> yeah, cool. I'll steal 34 Ford. So when Melinda threw open the garage door and there was a 34 Ford there, I completely expected that. I just didn't expect one to look this nice. So what's the full story? My dad got this thing about 35 years ago. It's been, uh, it's been sitting in the barn. I got it out and did some work to it, trying to find a new home, man, somebody that'll redo it like it should be done. And uh, when my dad passed away, he left it to me. We really don't have the storage room to have it here. It's exactly what we want. I mean, we cut our teeth on 30 to 36 Fords. I mean, that's kind of gas monkeys. That's one of our strong suits, for sure. The 1934 Ford is a really popular choice for hot rods. The appeal of this car was timeless. I mean, features like a raked body, suicide doors, and a rumble seat. What gets better than that? Clyde Burrow was a huge fan of Fords. Bonnie and Clyde had some fun, and some people think it was bad news, but he lived and died in a Ford. That works for me. I definitely like the hood. That's cool. Got AC. 
Got heat? Oh, yeah. Will it start? Yeah, it starts. The motor's a little street rotty, but it sounds healthy. The stance is good on it, even though it's got a Corvette rear end. Fundamentally, this is a really solid car. You know, the body looks to be in excellent shape. Steel fender, steel body, suicide door, 5 to 34. This is a really good car. Is this you? What is that? That is me. That's actually me when I was about five. On this car? On that car, on that fender. One of the cool things I saw was the photograph, and it showed Jim laying on the fender as a young boy, which was uh, interesting because we can see how long it's been in the family. And the cars that say in a single family tend to be better taken care of than ones that get passed around. Well, I was looking to get 30 for it. I got to get it back to Dallas. That's a long haul. It's 1500 bucks there. Um, 22 and a half. What do you think, like 27? Yeah. By the time I get it back, I'm back up to that 30 number and straighten it out. Uh, I'm here, though, and uh, I like it. I like the fact that it's got just an old look to it, man. It's cool. 25 grand right now. Do 25 on Cool. All awesome, right, man. It was worth my trip Thank out you. here. Then. All right. Thanks Jim so and I settled much. for 25 grand. That's well under 30 when I get right. it back to Dallas. It's got a good checked lacquer paint job and old school interior. I mean, that's just it's money in the bank forever. I mean, it can sit there at the shop or we can sell it or whatever. It's it's like having a savings account. We got a flight to catch, guys. Thank you all, all right. very much. Thank you. Awesome again. Thank you so much. I'm excited. Thanks. It's gonna stay just like that. I'm going to miss it because we have a lot of memories in this car, but I'm happy that that Jim's OK with letting it go because he wasn't for a while, and he is finally now, so yeah. that's good. So right now, we're unloading my uh, 34 Ford from uh, Georgia. Got this is a pretty good deal, I believe. Keys on the full board. No problemo. This car comes with some pretty good family history. I mean, Jim Harrington, the guy I bought it from, grew up with this Ford 5 window, and he didn't really want to part with it. How am I doing on the other side? But his wife needed the parking space. And like Jay Giles' band said, Coming down. Love stinks. Yeah! I wouldn't give up that car, but then I'm not married anymore either. <laughs> I got the car for 25 grand, but just as it sits, I think it's worth 30. So I'm gonna chunk it on the old interwebs and make some money. But we prompt them. Tony, get your camera and make this hasta la bye bye, because we need to put some dinero in El Banco. So this is a 34 Ford five window kid. Oh, ouch. Still has lacquer paint. Uh, we're really cool, has kind of a crazing to it, almost like patina, but not. Suicide doors, these are a real cool feature on the hot rod. This also came with a roll-up rear window. These had a rumble seat for the back seat passengers. You could roll the window down and talk to them. Or you could roll it up and not talk to them. Oh, me, me. This car looks like it's got some nice touches on it, some different headlights, uh, a little bit bigger. They look like the commercial headlamps. Looks like a Greyhound or a Leaping Dog hood ornament. Just made it the, the original owner's car. This was, he knew it was his car when he walked out in the parking lot. A couple of weeks ago, some of the guys that used to work here at Gas Monkey started their own place. And they called it Fired Up Garage. Well, we got the old shop. Cool. Well, Richard and I thought we were done with Tom and Jordan, but no such luck. Whoa. Dude, do you feel what I feel? Yeah, go that way. Last time you were wandering around in one of Richard's cars, you got fired. Well, you can't really fire me this time. What are y'all up to? I got all Holly, I'll take it back. I can guess what you're up to. Now they separate a wheel and tire. Yeah, last time we seen Richard, he told us if we ever need anything, all we did is come over. There you go. And, uh, I didn't know we needed air conditioning, but uh It's pretty fancy. Pretty fancy. I'm this first shop I've ever worked in that had AC. It is nice in here. Best of luck, guys. Look at that, man. Sweeping, cleaning up. Yep. See up in the front where the offices are, I got a dude that does that. Uh-oh. Scott McMillan. Oh, yeah? It's Richard. Hey, boss, it's Scott. Hey, man, what's up? Tom and Jordan was over at the shop the other day. You guys got AC? 
Yeah, we just got it all plugged in, and, and uh, it's a nice, uh, comfortable 72 degrees tell him, in the shop. Tell him it's cold. It's really actually yeah. cold. You know, it, it costs a lot of money to put AC in that big shop. It only costs a little bit of money to put AC in this shop. We figured being a, uh, a uh, respectable landlord, you might uh, put some AC in here for us. No, I'm more like a slumlord. You ain't getting no AC, man. You are starting to make me uh, just a little bit irritated. I want some AC, dude, and I want it like yesterday. Well, listen, we got, we got an old unit we can rig up for you. We'll send it over. I paid eight grand for this car, and when we're done monkeying around with it, it should be worth north of 50. For my money, the early 60s was when Detroit got it all right. The fins on the Bel Air were big, but not ridiculous. The lines are clean. The car just looks smooth. Hell, if I could go back in time, I'd sell you a 60 Bel Air. They make everything for this car. Maybe like suspensions, bolts on. The new Camaro motors are uh, LS3s, right? Mm -hmm. 100 horse stock. Yep. Yeah. As I, I think that's a wonderful place Perfect. to start with. Yeah. And then, you know, modern transmission, modern motor, fuel injection. The interior, all we're doing is the seats. The cafeteria table mat you know, seats you don't have, feel that? have got to go. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the plan for the paint? I mean, it looks good, so we're not going to touch I it, don't, right? I don't want to. And Tasia, if you think that it can be cleaned up more, I don't, honestly, I don't think it can. I think we can buff it. I get John hunting some parts on it, but I tell you right now, I think we can build this car in a couple days. <laughs> Look at Jordan's face. <laughs> what? So. It's not that I've heard this whole yeah. song and dance before. <laughs> we don't have to build anything. On, on, on this one, I'm 100% confident I'm going to leave the wheel wells in it. And so I know that's where we have to stop. So <laughs> right now. <laughs> right, right, right now. now. Yeah. Let's give this one a wiggle. Did I get you? <laughs> <laughs> All in my ear, in my mouth. Oh, you. We ship thousands of cars. This is the first one to show up with gasoline inside the crankcase. Yeah. That's the, that's the light. <laughs> yeah. It practically had a full tank of gas inside the engine. If it would have sparked one time, that truck, you would have been able to put it out. Hey, at least the inside of the motor would be clean. Oh, boy. On the back end of this car, we're going to hang ride tech control arms, replace the whole thing with a strong arm kit. So it's the upper link, both lower links, bag mounts. We're going to use Fox shocks on it, replace the sway bar, basically get rid of all the junk on this thing. Coming down. We're smart enough to use the right stuff. We may not look like it, but we're smart. The deal is we got to make money because Richard bought some and one good car, and we gotta make this one car make up for all of it. But what we're not doing is we're not gonna mess with the things that are gonna blow the car apart, take a lot longer, a lot of money to fix. It's a black car, it looks good, and it'll always look good. Almost all the work that we're doing is gonna be happening underneath the car. Rigger, rigger, rigger. When we're done, it'll be 20th century on top and 21st century underneath. So we've got our 60 Bel Air pretty much completely torn down, at least all the mechanicals. We've got the drive line out, the front suspension, the rear suspension, all the steering out. Hey! The cool thing is we're gonna replace all of it, the whole thing. So the whole front of this car, the whole back of this car, all the suspension rolling, stopping up and down will all be brand new. We're putting a big motor in the Bel Air, and when you've got a lot to go, you need a whole lot of whoa. So we've got a set of 14-inch brakes here. So what I'm doing at the moment is actually installing the rotors onto the hat. And then uh, we're going to tighten them all up, and then we use a star pattern just to tighten them down, just like you put on a lug nut, and then uh, torque them, and then we're going to safety wire them. Which one do you want it on? Cylinder 60 here. We're upgrading to a massive, massive sway bar. So when you go in the corner and you dive real hard, it don't go rawr, rawr, body roll, roll off in a ditch. You can go in the corners way harder, way faster. It keeps the body straight. Anti-roll, anti-sway bar. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by on the second installment of our brakes done already. 
I've got both the rears done, and I'm working on the fronts. It's actually safety wiring the hat to the rotor. The reason we do that is because the brakes get really hot when stopping a big, heavy car that's going fast. The heat and the vibration can cause the bolts to literally come unscrewed. So we safety wire them together in a pattern that prevents them from coming loose. Make sure that the rotor stays attached to the hat, because if not, we lose the ability to stop the car. So I bought this car in a big nest up in Illinois. I thought the quickest and fastest money was going to be the 68 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. Turns out, it wasn't. And I was wrong, because it had a lot of rust in it. In the end, all it was good for was a few donuts and a laugh. <laughs> so after we got off that one, we could finally put our money where it belonged. A black 60 Bel Air. They don't get much better looking than this. Richard let us loose with the checkbook. Someone had put a 327 in. Got an LS3 4L65 fuel injected. So we've got all the electronics, a brand new motor. Then we're going fast. Naturally, we had to control this thing, so we need to have good suspension. It's automatic, get in, turn the key, got the car low. And compared to how tall and dorky it was before, it's a world of difference. As for the look, I think it's pretty obvious. Usually we'd paint a car, but this one already had a really good paint job on it. It was just a little old and needed a little bit of touch up. Put a nice, good buff job on it, a little bit of polishing. This car shines great. And since we've already got a black exterior, black tires, figure we probably needed black interior. What Sue came up with is a massive improvement on the old seats. On top of that, the gauges are awesome. We don't have a high-tech motor and low-tech gauges. Everything about this car is brand spanking new, except for the sheet metal. You see this car coming down the road, at first, you're not even going to know what it is because it's low, it's lean, it's mean. Then you realize it's a 60 Bel Air, and you hear how it sounds, and you see how fast it is. You're going to park your little 5.0 Mustang and just go home whimpering. It was a really hard thing for me to throw all the money and the time and the effort that we had in the 68 Cadillac and just kind of chunk it to the side. But Aaron assured me if I let him do what he wanted to do to this 60 Bel Air, we could make it back. I think he's right. we still got to sell it to prove him right. But this is one of the sweetest rides we've built here at Gas Monkey so far. What's up? Uh, everything's jamming. Brakes are complete. Uh, trans system is almost complete. Dustin's finishing up. Radiator's managed. Fuel system's complete. Closing in on possible fire. No kidding. This it looks good, man. The only big deal is, is that it's got to be done, because the event's this weekend. And if I'm going to put it in there and let them auction it off, I got to commit. You think we can make it? Maybe. But the problem is, though, is the motor's not tuned, and I don't have an upholstery yet. Do I think we can have a running truck by then? Yeah, but running correctly? I don't know. Because we got well over 100 grand in this thing. And I'm not done spending yet. This isn't just another quick flip. I mean, I'm sinking a lot of cash, like breaking bad kind of cash into this C10 truck. If it doesn't get Gas Monkey the kind of exposure that I needed to at Cattle Baron's Ball, well, I might just have to turn out the lights. Now I'm thinking, if I put it in that room, I'm in the room with the wealthiest people in Texas. One guy's going to get it, but there's allowed to be six or 10 more that want it. It's my target audience, and this is one of the best things we've built so far. One of the cleanest. All right. All right. You keep trucking. Whoa! Let me tell you what I know about Texas, and that is it's truck country, and we know trucks. This is a 1976 C10, and we have to travel far and wide to find just the right vehicle that we're gonna build for Gas Monkey Garage. And let me tell you, that was a long 200-yard walk. Much to our surprise, we found almost a completely original short box 76 C10. We love C10s. I mean, practically everyone in the shop is a truck guy. So the opportunity to take a two-wheel drive, highly optioned C10 and stick it on the ground, well, I couldn't believe my eyes. They're in such a good mood. They're so excited to work on it that I said, you got carte blanche. Aaron took that to heart and just took off. 
we need to motivate this big son of a gun. We kind of wanted the granddaddy of them all. And while it may not be an LS9, it is an LS7, which is a 427 cubic inch small block LS engine. So we had the guys at Skaga and Dickies actually put in a much bigger cam, and then we backed it up with a 4L85. We just wanted to make sure that this much torque and this much horsepower wasn't spent laying all over the road. And if we're going to go fast, we've got to be able to shut it down. For that, we turned to Willwood brakes in the front and the back. We still needed a rear axle. And since we've been so pleased with all of our Curry axles, we decided to go there one more time. Yeah! Oh and it's absolutely God. gorgeous. This is the baddest vehicle that's ever turned out of Gas Monkey Garage, period, out the end. It is perfect from bumper to bumper, top to bottom, if you can see the bottom, because it's all the way down on the ground. We wanted this thing in the weeds. We called Porterbilt. We used an entire Porterbilt front end, the Porterbilt four-link rear end, and we put it all on air ride. And to control the air ride, we've used AccuAir suspension, which completely automates the air system. Well, let's talk about the interior. You know, we like Sue. She does a good job for us, but well, I want to do something really different, really crazy. The inside smells about as wonderful as a Wilson's leather store, but it goes a heck of a lot faster. The paint, well, it looks fantastic. We went with the factory green, but we decided to add a white stripe that really makes it pop. After all the kicking and screaming and whining about sanding and spreading plastic, the paint looks absolutely great. We're into this truck for over 100 grand, and I'm going to donate it to the Cattle Baron's Ball to showcase Gas Monkey Garage. Boom. Can I get a beer now? It's about that time. Cool. So here we are, 2014 Cattle Baron's Ball. Woo! It's one of the biggest charity fundraisers. It's pretty exclusive. It's the richest people in town. And they come here to have a good time, drink some beer. Most of all, buy some stuff. Do you see the truck yet? It's on the other side of the stage if you get a chance. So already I've been mingling around, and everybody's talking about the truck. I have a 72 Ford Bronco that I thought was the baddest thing on the street until I saw this. This well. is incredible. My plan all along has been to donate it. Uh, hopefully, it brings a lot of money for uh, cancer research. And then I get a couple of clients out of it. Whoa! What's up, everybody? How's Dallas doing tonight? Richard All right, well, here's where you break out your wallet. We built this truck in the last four weeks, and it's absolutely perfect. It is the most unbelievable car and the most perfect one we've ever built at Gas Monkey Garage. This truck looks like the $102,000 I shelled out on it. The bid should be running up fast. Give me $50,000 and let's go! 50 down front, give me 60. 60, keep it going at 60. 60,000 when you go, 60 here. We'll do it at 60. 60 down front, 70. 80,000 now. 80,000 now, but I'm at 80. In the back, 90. 90,000, I'm at 80. In the back, now 90. 80,000 now, 90, but I'm at 90. 90,000, no money for this at 90. It's no reserve. I mean, the hand's got to go up in the air, and the money's got to be there. I don't know what happened, but the big fishes aren't there. I don't know if they're not paying attention. I don't know if it's the wrong color. $90,000, what are we talking about here? Have you seen this truck? It's once in a lifetime opportunity. And 85 grand. Woo! Going once. Going twice. Last call, ladies anybody, and gentlemen. Anybody, 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 anybody? Sold it right here at $85,000. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to a good home. Dennis is my buddy, and he collects a lot of cars. He knows the value. Well, turns out the smartest guy in the room was my best friend, Dennis. I knew what went into the truck. I know what it takes to build a truck like that. It's literally a $200,000 piece. Yeah. I just stole your truck. <laughs> Some might think that I misjudged the audience. Here's the problem. When me and Dennis go to car auctions, it's guys. They're buying and selling cars. They're having fun. They're drinking beer. I misjudged this on the fact that everybody brings their wife. Those guys out there wanted to raise their hands, and their wives or their girlfriends were standing there and telling them, no, honey, don't bid. No, you don't want that. Maybe these guys at the Cattle Baron's Ball, they're missing one thing. Or they'd have raised their hand and bought that badass pickup. One of the best things you guys have ever built, and I stole it. So what do we do now? Well, since the Barons are still balling, yeah. I say we get after it. Let's go do some dancing. 